Hi, my name is Pete G with Chopper Design. I come to you today to share a story about Justin Rokel, a real American patriot. This should be a very uplifting story for most folks and it's not exactly what we expected. Initially we thought we'd be telling about how wonderful we are for helping out a wounded warrior. But the real story is Justin himself. 24 years old from Texas. Here he is with his fiance, always smiling, always laughing, doesn't complain about a thing. I had the privilege of spending some time with Justin and his support folks, his sister, his cousin, his fiance. The only difference between him and us are the two prosthetics he walks on, courtesy of the war in Afghanistan. Justin Rokel, a true American patriot. Chopper Design Services manufactures a leg-up landing gear motorcycle stabilization system. Shortly before Justin contacted us about such a system, we were in the process of trying to find a wounded warrior we could help get back up on his motorcycle. Little do we know how rewarding this entire process would be for all of us. Arrangements are made, bike is delivered to us, we make all the changes, Finally, after months, Justin comes to see us. I get to take some time and talk to him. First question I ask him, why did you enlist? Uh, well, when 9-11 uh, happened, I just decided... Was that how early you enlisted? I was a freshman when 9-11 happened. I decided I was going to go to the Marine Corps right off the bat. The more I listened, the more impressed I was with Justin. The story continues as he explains how the accident that caused him to lose his legs occurred. And how long into Afghanistan before you got hurt? I think it's four months. Four months. Yeah. Halfway into the tour, basically. Yes, sir. Right. And uh, if you told me, if I remember correctly, were you in a vehicle when? Mm, uh, yes, sir. Well, we actually uh, we just lost a bunch of guys, and uh, we only had we were in platoon elements, and we went over there. And first we were living in trucks, and uh, actually we were living in caves. And then we were living in trucks, and then we made our own little uh, forward operating base. Mm -hmm. And uh, we just lost a bunch of guys, so we were all kind of, all the team leaders as well, were kind of intertwining to make up squads. You yeah. know, like we'd be a, I'd be a team leader in my squad, and then when the next squad went out, I'd go in there and do whatever he wanted me to be. Mm -hmm. And for that one, he wanted me to be a, a turret gunner. I was a machine gunner by trade. Mm -hmm. So I was in a, in a turret. And, uh, of, a, of a tank? or no, uh, just a Humvee. Oh, just a Humvee, yes, okay. We, had, we were getting our first mail drop, and we went out there to escort them in. Right, sure. And uh, on the back, yeah, we were supposed to in this course, we, we took the hit. The things our young volunteers live through are unbelievable. And then, uh, did you get treated over there or in Germany? Or? Well, it, actually, because of how far out we were, it took like six hours for the, Somebody to come get the chopper to get there. And it was me and uh, our corpsman was killed uh, instantly. I have to keep that up there. But, uh, and then uh, the driver and a driver were burned up pretty bad. Uh, and uh, the choppers came in, took us to a, I still don't know where we were, but I know it was somewhere in Afghanistan. Right. And uh, we got treated there, and then we got immediately sent to Germany. And, and, and you got a lot of treatment in Germany mm -hmm. before you yes, came sir. back? Yeah, they yeah. replaced my whole back in Germany. I didn't even know, really? I didn't even know my back was broke. I'm when you not, say replaced, you got a, um, they were uh, uh, fused I, together? I got two 12-inch rods in my back I got with uh, like 13 or 14 screws. Right, right. The more we spoke, the more I wondered. How could this kid be so well adjusted? I mean, this guy doesn't feel bad for himself. He doesn't, he's always happy. I had to ask him, how come he's not Lieutenant Dan? You know, I mean, I would have been, <laughs> no doubt I would have been a terror. You know, I, mentally, it, it's just, it just amazes me how, how well, uh, you know, keeled you are uh, after the thing. You know? Well, I mean, I believed in while I was going over there. When I went in, I believed in it still. Okay. And uh, that's, that, I've never once ever done Marine Corps this war or anything like that. And the hardest part for me was just not, oh, I'm not going to be able to do this. It's like, how am I going to figure out how I'm going to be able to do that again? But, he believes in what he did. He doesn't blame anybody. How refreshing. He wants to figure out how to get on a horse, and in this case, how to get on his motorcycle. Listen to what Trish has to say about Justin. He's, and he's like that from... The moment he wakes up, he is singing and yelling and mm -hmm. waking all of us up. And the moment he is out, we have ten minutes to get there. 
We're really happy to help you, Justin. Great job. Thanks for your service, buddy. Now that we know a little bit about Justin, let's talk about his motorcycle, the reason he came to see us in the first place. With Justin's disabilities, he's unable to use his legs to balance a bike when he comes to a stop. Riding's no problem, but stopping is problematic. Our leg up landing gear system is a retractable stabilization system that comes down just before you stop and comes back up as soon as you start rolling again. As you can see here, the bike is standing on its own. We also had to concern ourselves with his ability to shift the motorcycle. An electric shifter by a company called Pingle was the ticket. This is an electric device that allows him to press a button to upshift to downshift. We backed that up with a handmade hand shifter in case the electric shifter fails. An automatic clutch was donated by EFM Auto Clutch. We put that on the bike. It makes it easier for him to handle the motorcycle. He can't move his ankles. He doesn't have ankles. So he has to, we had to put both brakes on his front hand grip, which we did and installed a proportioning valve. All the technical problems that would make it difficult for Justin to ride were now solved. Unfortunately, when he arrived, it was raining out. Justin, who had waited months for this day, would have to wait a little longer. But we did get creative to get him up to speed on his new bike. A wheel dynamometer, a machine that allows you to mount the motorcycle and spin the rear wheel that we happen to have at Chopper Design, was used to let Justin get a feel for his motorcycle. All the buttons, the switches, the methodologies, when to bring the wheels down, when to bring the wheels up, anything to give him a little chance and a little feel for what he'd expect once he got his bike back to Texas. Soon it was time to say goodbye to my new friends. It was sad to see him pulling his truck away in, in the rain, but Justin and his family left quite a mark on myself, my staff, my family. It made us think about what's American, what this country is all about. As they pulled away, of course, a big thank you. Thank you, guys. And a hoot from his support team. I'm happy to report we just heard from Justin, and he's out in Texas riding his motorcycle with a big smile on his face. We learned a lot from Justin in just a few days. It made us think about what our young men and women are doing to protect our way of life. And maybe the fact that the lawn's a little long isn't something to complain about. Not when these kids are doing what they're doing for us. To learn more or make a donation to Justin or other wounded warriors, visit our website at landinggear.com. Click on the picture of Justin in the top right corner and you can learn all about it. Appreciate you taking your time to look at this. Hopefully it opened your eyes as much as it did ours. If so, please tell your friends. Have them have a look at Justin's story. Thanks for watching.